Hello everyone. This is coadb.com or the Coat of Arms database. And today we're briefly going to discuss eight social classes that bore coats of arms. The reason I wanted to make this video is because there is a misconception or a myth out there that coats of arms only belonged to royalty or nobility, and that is not true. Although both of those classes bore coats of arms, there were other classes as well. The first and the most obvious is the titled nobility. <clears throat> These are the ones that we are most familiar with. Titles from England, such as Duke, Earl, Baron, Viscounts, and then you have the continental equivalents in Germany. Freiherr is a baron, Graf is a count, and then there's also French equivalents and equivalents for uh, various countries. One example of a titled nobility member with a coat of arms was Leonard Tortensen, born in 1603 who was a Swedish field marshal and military engineer, nicknamed Blixton, meaning lightning, who was made Count of Ortala by Queen Christina. And his coat of arms features two cannons and some other military elements. Next, coats of arms also belonged to the untitled nobility. And the great example of this are the Spanish Hidalgos. These are <clears throat> the untitled nobility are people who are ennobled but are not given title. And, and the best example of that are the Hidalgos in Spain. Um, they were basically given tax exempt status. Yeah, one example was Pedro de Balbueno, who was ennobled on January 7th, 1576. And his Carta Executoria was issued by King Philip of Spain. And we see a copy here on the, on the right, confirming the status of Hidalga Gua of Pedro de Balbuena, resident of Miranda del Castaner, exempting him from paying any future tributes to the king and demanding to have returned to him any tributes, endowments, or seizures that might have been taken earlier. Next is the landed gentry. This is a big category. These are families who own significant amounts of land and live nearly entirely on the rental income or had a county estate, which was a large house or houses surrounded by outbuildings, farmlands, and woods. So these were landowners, but they were not necessarily titled. One example is the Fortescue family, documented in the visitations made in the year 1530, and they had a coat of arms blazoned as follows. Azure, a bend engrailed argent, plain cotized ore, which is shown in the middle of the slide here. And this family owned lands in Devon and claimed descent from feudal lords of Wimpston, who had been in place since around the time of the Norman Conquest in 1066 AD, and they might have descended from knights in Normandy, France. The next category of people who had coats of arms were merchants and the bourgeoisie. Uh, the bourgeois, bourgeoisie can be thought of as the upper middle class. These were people who lived in cities dedicated to commerce, for example, merchants, craftsmen, and artisans, as opposed to being feudal tenants bound to the land and lord. One example of a person in this category was Baltazar Martinat, 
or Martineau, who was born in 1636. This he came from a French clockmaking family, and his brothers were clockmakers as well. And here we see his coat of arms, and as well as one of the clocks his family made. The fifth category were burghers and patricians. This is another large category of people who held coats of arms. These were people who held the rank or minor title in a medieval town and who often served as city officials. So important city officials, but not nobility, not titled. Pippinjoy family it was an early example. They were influential in Brussels in the 13th century. They exercised many public functions. For example, Guillaume Pippinjoy was a bailiff in Gaisbach and an alderman of Brussels several times between 1287 and 1306. Their coat of arms was blazoned as follows. Azure three fleur-de-lis couped argent. And we see this coat of arms in the upper left-hand corner of this oil painting of Sophia Anna Pippinpoi. If I was saying Pippinjoy, I, I was incorrect. It's Pippinpoi. Next is the military. Some high-ranking Officers in the military could be granted a coat of arms for service and acts of valor and bravery. One example was Mike, Michael or Michel Dubikic, who was born in 1727. He was a ship captain who joined the King's Navy in France during the War of the League of Augsburg, and his valors and injuries earned him the rank of lieutenant at the age of only 16. He engaged in commercial expeditions in the Pacific Ocean around the Cape Horn, and he returned to Le Havre, France with a great fortune, and he procured a private mansion. His family took over his trading business and was granted a title in 1753. The family's coat of arms was blazoned as follows. Azure, three trees eradicated argent which we see on the right, as well as a painting of Michel Dubikic. The seventh category was the clergy and church. Some high-ranking officials within the clergy and church could be granted a coat of arms for their service. Take, for example, Jacob Mountain, born 1749 uh, in Norfolk, England. He was a priest that was appointed the first Anglican Bishop of Quebec. He was granted a coat of arms on August 3rd, 1793, blazoned ermine on a chevron between three lions rampant guard and sable, each supporting between the four paws an escalop erect, gules a mitre on each side, a cross cross lit fitchy argent. And lastly, uh, academia and the arts. You know, some scientists, doctors, artists, authors, and others who excelled in their respective fields and brought pride and esteem to their realm were granted coats of arms, such as Jans Jakob Berzelius, born 1779, the son of a school teacher who became a renowned Swedish chemist who made contributions to the field of electrochemistry and chemical bonding. He was ennobled in 1818 and granted the title of Freiherr or Baron. If you have any questions regarding the social classes and coats of arms, please post them in the comments and we will do our best to address them. Thank you.